<sighs> so, last week I went to audition. And yeah, that's pretty cool news. It's good news. However, I still haven't heard back from them. Get back to me. Get back to me. But Kyle, didn't you say that was good news? Why is it good news if they haven't got back to you? Well, any chance to be able to showcase my acting ability, to just have the opportunity in the room is good news. And I'm proud either way. I'm happy either way. But guess what guys, it's actually inspired me to make a video to actually help those who are perhaps just getting started in the acting industry. My fellow brother and sisters who are actors, my fellow thespians, to actually know how to get into the audition room. And that's one thing which I want this video to be about is how to actually find your casting type. How do I know that? How do you actually know that? Now, as you know, as an actor, a lot of the times things are actually out of your hands and it's out of your control. Like your agent has to go out there and pretty much try to get you the opportunity to get in front of casting directors. The casting directors have to decide if they even want to call you in an audition room for you to actually audition. And then everything after that is pretty much depending on these people who are trying to help you to actually get into that role and perform. Now, the things which are up to you is number one, is how you market yourself. And that's through your headshot, your, your showreel, things to do with your social media, how you market yourself. Also, what you actually do in the room. Once you actually get into that casting room, what you actually do. And three, what you do behind the scenes as well, such as networking, when you're on set, what you actually do to build those good relationships with, you know, the director, you know, the cast, you know, being someone who has a good energy on set, not someone who's criticizing people and making other people feel bad about themselves, right? You being someone who's like, oh, yo, look, my energy is going to be something which is going to be memorable on set. So that person now, that director who's worked with you, they have a good time working with you and they might think, okay, for future projects, they might, think about you. Now, what this video is focusing on is number one, how you market yourself. Knowing your casting type is very important because that's what casting directors look for, right? When you look at your headshot, when you look at your showreel, that's the first thing they think of, whether you could fit into their certain demographics. Now, there's specific points which comes into play when you're actually determining your casting type. Number one is your age. What age range you look like you actually fit in? What age range you look like you can actually play? So, for example, right, me, if I look at myself, I could, like, I have quite a young face. I have a baby face. I know people always say that, right? <laughs> But I could play younger characters, you know, people who are probably like, I've, I've heard people say that I look 16, so I could probably play around that age up until my early 20s, right? I'm 22 right now. I could play within my 20s as well. I could play uh, age range of 16 up to 22, I'll, I will say. So that's for, that's six years gap between that. So that's a pretty decent age range. I can't go about be like, oh yeah, I could play 30 because I know, looking at myself, yeah, I don't really look 30. Like, and I've heard that from people. They they normally think I'm younger than I actually am. More it depends on certain people. They might look at me and think, okay, this person actually looks his age. It really depends on the person and how you actually present yourself, especially in your headshots. Also, your physical type. And this is your ethnicity. This is, you know, how your hair might look. You know, face, you know, specific facial features, whether you have scars, whether you have, you know, spots. Um, maybe your face just looks a bit like quirky. Just seems like there's a, a quirky attribute about you, um, which that might appeal to the specific character which the casting director is actually looking for. Or your gender as well. That comes into play. That's one thing which I should have mentioned first. Gender. Whoa, I just burped. That was disgusting. Your gender. Right, because that's obviously important when it comes to casting, you know, specific roles as well. And with these physical types, it will help the casting director to think, okay, what type can I instantly categorize this person in? And there's specific character types. These are the most common character types, which are leading man, leading lady, um, basically the dumb jock or, you know, the sort of like the rebellious teen, like the, the biker sort of dude. Um, the girl next door type, there's the funny best friend, 
there's sort of like the angry old man the reluctant sort of hero and also like the hot blonde sort of person like those are normally the most common types of characters which you will normally find people are being cast for like you look at kevin hart for example kevin hart you think of him if he's been cast into a movie he's always go play as that funny sort of best friend i mean he's a comedian anyways right that's his personality and uh literally that that's the character type he will actually get played in because his physicality as well he's short right he's uh he's he, his energy is like he's all over the place as well like he play into that sort of character type whereas you think of Dwayne Johnson right the rock you think okay he he'll be cast into the leading man sort of role because you know he's he's big his voice is strong. These are the type of characters they'll be actually cast into. Also, your personality and energy depends on what character you might even get put into. And that will still relate to the type of character, the archetypes which they actually have. Think about your energy. Think about your energy and think, yo, okay, am I someone who's energetic? Am I someone who's more calm? Do I seem more aggressive? Do I seem someone who's quite shy? Like that will really play into what sort of character type you might even play into as well. And that will be shown in your showreel when the type of characters you actually played in the past and the casting director can actually see that and they think, okay, cool. Like I have an idea what type of actor this person is. I could see how this could relate to that specific role. Also your vocal type, thinking about am I very articulate to have, you know, good pronunciation or am I someone who, you know, the way I speak, I sound like less educated. Do I seem like I could play those people who like are in sort of urban areas because I use quite a lot of slang. Your vocal type, like even how deep your voice is, if it's light, if it's really deep normally you'll find people who are cast in action movies they'll have like a deep voice anyways because it just seems more masculine whereas if someone has a higher pitched voice it probably they'll be seen more in comedy films so it really depends on those factors really think about yourself right really connect to yourself look at yourself and think yo okay this is the character i could play and what i want you to do as well is you want to ask others as well get other people's opinions, whether that's from your, your family, friends, co-workers, other actors, even your agent, right? Getting advice from your agent as well. Like what sort of character type do you think I will fit into? Because that will help you as to trying to determine what sort of character you are and what character you can actually go for, right? And um, that will help when it comes to marketing yourself, when it comes to your headshots, because you could create specific headshots which can appeal to that type of character you want to portray for the casting director to then look at you and think okay i'm going to cast them in this type of production so that's very important obviously some people might tell you what you might want to hear others might actually give you really good you know constructive criticism own it and think okay cool I, I got their opinion as well. Now I could shape that into the type of characters I should sort of market myself as. So you could actually get into the audition room and be called into the audition room. Also, what you could do is you can compare yourself to you know, successful actors who you relate to and you feel are similar to you, right? Whether that's your personality or your look and see what types of characters they actually play because that will help you in regards to trying to determine your character type. Now, I know there's something called typecast, right? And that's what a lot of people get worried about. A lot of people get worried about being typecast. When you start off in your career, being typecast can actually be very beneficial because it will help you land roles. It'll help you get into the audition rooms, you know, as much as possible, especially if you are marketing yourself properly to fit along that type of character, you could start getting in the audition room like that, right? You can even book roles because you just are seen as that type of character. The most common actors who are typecast, think about it, Samuel L. Jackson, he always plays as that badass, like in, in movies. He always has that scene where he just runs and he just like shouts at everyone. But it's just like, you watch it and you're like, whoa, like this guy, he's a badass. Like you're like, yo, this is cool. Like it's, those are always the best scenes in his movies. Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Ray Liotta, they always have these sort of gangster roles. 
right? These mobster roles or something relating to crime. They might even be playing as police officers. They normally get typecast into those sort of type of characters. Um, Steve Buscemi, he's always in Adam Sandler movies, right? But he's always plays as you know the the weird, quirky character, like the weirdo. You're like, you look at him, you think whoa like this guy is creepy like all his roles which he pretty much plays you know in con air in um in you know any adam Sandler movie pretty much like he always plays as the weird the like the weird character you know you watch him in billy madison he plays as the sort of like obsessive guy who puts on lipstick for some reason and comes back to you know he's crossing like bullies off his list like and he ends up like it's just weird or when you watch him in what was it i think it's mr deeds he's like he's crazy eyes or something he's got cross eyes. like he always plays as weirder so those are the types of actors who actually be typecast into those certain characters now how do you break out of that you could do that by your headshots and having contradicting headshots you might do something which will show a range if you're normally typecast into the funny best friend you might have something where you're happy right you look lively but the other one you see more serious to sort of counter it having that counter will give that range you think okay this person can play as you know the funny best friend but they could also play as the rebellious teen you know the the dumb jog it depends on your physical type like if you're quite fit and muscly yeah definitely what i want you to do i want you to take action i want you to get a piece of paper and i want you to write down what age range you you could fit into by looking at yourself really judging yourself and your appearance think of what age range can i fit into also write down ethnicity as well right what ethnicities you could possibly play so for me for example if i look at myself obviously i'm mixed race i'll say mixed race um, i could probably fit into hispanic i've heard someone say that i look egyptian before so, but either way i'm like okay cool i could maybe pass as sort of middle eastern like sort of asian roles um sort of like latin american like I, thinking about your ethnicity and think about like what sort of ethnic groups you could fit into by looking at your appearance also what sort of social class you might look the type of clothing you wear if you're someone who dresses quite um smart then you might think okay like if it comes to your headshots and you're doing your headshots on the type of clothing you're wearing your headshots the customer my director might look at it then and think you're like okay this person looks like they could play in the social class of middle class like they look like they have a good you know paying job they look like they're educated whereas if you're in your headshots you look like you're dressed more urban then the customer might direct might look at it and think okay all right this person could probably play as the top boy type of character really your appearance like even your build right are you someone who's quite muscly are you someone who's very lean are you someone who you know, has long hair short hair this or that and thinking about what types of characters could relate to that right think about what type of movies like you could probably go for right if i look at myself i could probably think okay yeah the type of movies i could like costume directors could possibly of chose me for is like things like say divergent hunger games maze runner right these people are young they're they look athletic and that that's the role because they have to run around a lot they have to fight right all these um stunts and action scenes as well they'll be in good shape and know myself i am in good shape like i am athletic um so yeah i could have got those types of roles a lot of people say i'm good looking as well so uh like i could possibly go for romance movies like get called into roles for like that depending on how i present myself as well like i could possibly get called in for sort of like more urban characters if i dress myself in a way like i could probably get called in for like top boy or like this or that like look like a more urban character and funny thing is i actually managed to get a role in a short film i'm doing in january I'm on set on january and the character who I'm actually playing is an urban character. It's about knife crime as well. So I'm actually playing as one of these sort of gang members. So yeah, like obviously I could see for myself like the type of roles which I'm actually booking, what type of like, what ca what casting type I'm actually could be seen into as well. Like it helps knowing that. So yeah, what I want you to do is write down what type of 
like films, TV programs, you know, which you could possibly be called in for. Just think, okay, like this is the type of roles I could actually possibly get called in. Like if you think about all your physical attributes, your age range, your, vo your, your vocal tone as well, because you could still get voice roles as well. You could get voice roles. Think about Morgan Freeman. Right, he's often typecast into the roles where he's like the wise old man, often because of his voice. Right, he has that sort of narrator's voice. In Bruce Almighty, he plays as God. In Shawshank Redemption, he played as Red, who was pretty much the narrator throughout the whole movie. He also advised Andy on his you know time in prison, so Andy could literally you know have a better time or know what to do. What else? He was in. Lego movie as uh, the wizard I can't remember the wizard's name but he played as some wizard person literally the wise old man sort of characters but that's literally through his vocal tone as well like people normally when you look at Morgan Freeman and you hear his voice you're like yeah <laughs> you want to give him those roles and he often gets those types of roles which is beneficial for him because he's getting paid for that at the end of the day he's booking roles he's getting paid for that <laughs> Why not? Writing down those things which I advised you will help you in regards to finding your character type. This is one thing which I was hard for me to determine my character type is because most people often say that I am a versatile actor. Like they look at me, they could see me in multiple different roles and that's good. Like that is really good, but it's kind of a pain in the ass when it comes to trying to determine how to portray yourself like and market yourself and for those who are also seen as versatile actors or told that quite a lot you obviously understand the pain the the annoyance it can become annoying however you can even have a range within your headshots and i need to actually get new headshots because as you can see i cut my hair recently and my last headshots is headshots where i actually had hair however you know if i get headshots now and I actually post it on my spotlight profile so obviously for those who are in the UK you might have a spotlight profile I don't know about US I think they use backstage correct me on that in the in the comments the good thing with spotlight you can have more than one headshot on there as well so the casting director might come across your profile yeah your profile and they can literally flick through your headshots as well so if people go off on my headshots you probably see like all right some of them i have longer hair some of them i might have a bit short hair i don't think i have any headshots at all where my hair is like this short but if i post it on there they might see okay this person like he has he could play you know whole different roles so i hope that was useful for you obviously give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to my channel and guys i really appreciate you actually sticking to the end of this video and really watching it and i hope this could help you guys out my fellow thespians my brothers and sisters in the acting industry yo you know what i'm saying i hope it can help you out yeah that's pretty much me <laughs> so yeah this is me kyle your boy peace out have a good one and i'm out baby i'm out i'm out i'm such a weirdo yeah bye bye